blessed be the name of the Lord. Turn your Bibles, please, to chapter 15 of the book of Matthew. This will be one of the most important messages that you've ever heard in your life, if you ever get it, and start doing it, and you can see the simplicity. And you see what gets God's attention, and things don't get God's attention. See, now let me approach you this morning from a different angle where the gospel is concerned. The reason that God does not do any more for you than what he does is because you don't get his attention. Do you understand that? You have to get God's attention. See, if you're not going to do things scripturally, you don't even get God's attention. I imagine you and me both has prayed hundreds of prayers that, that God didn't pay attention to. And try to get God to do things for us that he wouldn't pay attention to us because we're not pleasing him. You have to learn to do things to please the Lord. And of course, when you uplift the name of Jesus, that always pleases God. And I know we can please God to a certain degree by going to church, but you know, you're responsible to listen to what the preacher says, not just go to church. Well, first of all, you're responsible to listen to what the Lord God says. See, Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus is the great pastor. He's the great shepherd. The fellow you just heard soon of that particular group in Kentucky, he is the under-shepherd of that local group under the Lord Jesus Christ. See, when you're a pastor of a church, you're not the main pastor. Jesus is the main pastor. He's the main shepherd, and you're the under-shepherd. You are a shepherd, but you're the under-shepherd under him. And if you or your people can ever find out what pleases the Lord, and how can you get God's attention in diseases when they're killing you, demon-possessed children, something, you know, you're broke and can't pay your bills, you got all these bills piled up on the table and you can't pay it, my God, what am I going to do? Bill collectors knock on your door and you go to the basement. Yeah. And so you need to say, oh, God bless me. Well, you know, all the blessings of God is for you and they're free. See, all the blessings, think about that. All the blessings of God is for you, and they are free. Now, you're going to find out this morning, in this particular Bible lesson, why you don't get God's attention and what your main problem is. And then you're also going to find out exactly what to do to get God's attention, where he will do anything for you. Anything, anything. That's right. Some people say, well, Norville, can you make a devil leave somebody over in another city that's devil-possessed? Can, can, can you cause a devil? Well, I can't, well, I can't make the devil do anything except I'm, unless I do it in Jesus' name. But is it possible to get God's power to go to another city and drive demons out of a human being? Well, some human beings it is. People in your own family, you can stand the gap for them, yes. Your own children, oh, you said that right. Yeah, you can bring them back in. So now, Father, I'm going to give you quite a bit of scripture this morning. So just follow me real close in the scriptures in the 15th chapter of the book of Matthew with the first verse. Then came Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, say, Why do thy dis came to Jesus, say, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But Jesus answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? See, now, the Lord, if you gave God, if you gave Jesus a test with the Baptists or the Methodists or the Presbyterians or basically Lutherans or Catholics, if you did that, you see, Jesus, 
you heal people in the Bible, why didn't you heal my relative? Or why didn't you heal my friend that was a young person and died? Why didn't you heal them? You know what he'd say to you? Why did you have your own tradition where faith is concerned? Why didn't you stick to the book of Hebrews and you could have got it? Why do you why do you think that I'm going to? I tell you in the book of James, if you doubt me, you're not going to receive anything from me. I don't even want you to thank you. Why did you override and put your own tradition in the book of Hebrews and have your own your own style and own quality of faith? My God, you mean you're telling me that Presbyterian people or Baptist people or Catholic people don't have faith? They have faith in what they believe. Most churches in America have faith that Jesus is a Savior. Some of them don't preach it very strong, some of them preach it really strong, but most churches believe that Jesus is a Savior. He's a life giver and he'll give eternal life. But most things in the Bible, it's not what a church or denomination or your tradition or your doctrine, it's not what they preach that's wrong. I can take you to the First Baptist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana, where Dr. Pruitt was a pastor, uh, and, and you can hear him preach for years, and I'm not sure that you'll ever hear him preach anything wrong or not. I don't think you would. I think Dr. Pruitt is a good, solid man of God, and preach. I'm, I'm not sure you'll ever hear him preach anything wrong. It's all them things he leaves out. Sick people walk in, and they have no gospel to help them. Demon possessed people come in, they have no gospel to help them. Parents come in that's got demon possessed children, backslid on God, not serving the Lord, and they have no nothing to learn nor to help them. You might say, does the Bible teach parents something to do that can cause devils to leave their children over in another city that they come back to God? Why, well, sure it does. You said that, right? Glad you're here this morning. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus forever. Let's read the third verse again so I could slap you in the face again. Jesus answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. Make sure that you honor your father and mother as long as they breathe. Do you understand that? Make sure that you love them. Verse 5. Jesus said, But you say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandments of God in effect by your tradition. You have to stick to the scriptures, people. If you don't, you'll just make your believing. It won't work. It's just not effective, that's all. It's not effective. Jesus said, when you pull stuff like that, he said, you hypocrites. Where? In verse 7. He said, you hypocrites. Well, did his size prophesy of you, say. Now listen closely. It's getting right down in your living room. Jesus said, you hypocrites. Well, did his size prophesy of you, say. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. 
Now, I don't know about your heart, but I have a heart that has respect for God's Word, and I don't want to believe something that's not God's Word. I don't want to believe God my own way. I don't want to get my mind fixed on a certain way, and this is what I'm going to believe, bless God, this is, no, I don't want I want to keep my mind open to change. And get in line with the, with, with the Bible. God says we need the mind of Christ on the inside of us so we can believe the Bible. Notice verse 9. Their heart is far from me, but they say things about me. But their heart is far from me. And this is what happens to people like that. Verse 9. But in vain, they, they're churchgoers. But in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. But I go see my relatives. I have to be nice. <laughs> what I do? When I go see my relatives, I just have to be nice. Talk about a few nice things and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard to even tell them the truth. I mean, you start telling people about your relatives, my, my generation is Baptist, you start telling them about somebody getting healed. All right, now I got a testimony for you. We'll get it, we'll get it later on this week. But a fellow called me this morning. Now, you're not ready for this. <laughs> I can see me now telling my relatives this. In Jacksonville, Florida, here a while back, little Lee, his oldest daughter, <laughs> four years old, that little brown haired girl, you know, that runs around everywhere, jumps in all the pools. <laughs> and the other looks like me. And the other. <laughs> she, she, in Jacksonville, Florida, the night, she came up, I was going to pray for the sick, and she came up, just walked up here, you know, and wanted to help me pray for the sick. And I said, that's okay, honey, come on. And so, her and me both laid hands on all the sick people. Well, she met a little girl <clears throat> that was there that was, you know, deaf in her ear. And little Lee, so <laughs> she says, you know, my papa, I'll pray for you. And she's, little Lee got me in the honor of her. I got through pray. She says, papa, she says, come here. She says, come over here. Got me by the hand. She says, come over here, papa. I'll pray for this little girl. Because she, she's deaf, she needs her, she needs Jesus to heal her ear. Come over and pray for her. Let's go, let's go pray for her. So we go over there and lay our hands on a little, little girl, about nine years old, I think. I think to that I'm gonna give her give let, let her father give the give, give the testimony. But anyway, he told me this morning, he says, I y'all went over there and prayed for her. And he said, as soon as you and little Lee prayed for her, after little Lee got you to come over there, he says, in, in, in Wally Thomason's church in Jacksonville just the other night. I don't know, two, three or four weeks ago. He said, the river was running. He said, as soon as y'all prayed for her, the running stopped. He said, next morning, the next morning, when we got up, he says, my wife looked in the girl's ear and she saw something. And she got it, she got a little tweezers and got it out and pulled it out. And it was the old eardrum. The Holy Ghost had created a new eardrum and pushed the old one out. And she got some and pulled it out, and it was the old eardrum. And when she pulled it out, the girl heard perfectly. And she took her back to the doctor. The doctor says, uh, <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, uh, uh, I don't understand it, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, and it's all, it's all well, it's new, everything is, I don't understand it though. Well, who understands? I can see me now sitting at the dinner table. 
nice Baptist dinner. Boy, they sure can cook, I can tell you that. <laughs> so little Lee there, she could never have gotten to the right in the service when we go pray for a deaf girl. And we went over and prayed for her, and laid hands up on her and prayed for her, and the Holy Ghost created a new eardrum and pushed the old one out of her ear. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> After silence for a while, <laughs> they'd probably say, <clears throat> Would you like some more fried chicken, Norval? <laughs> Because when I tell it, I tell it a situation where they can't deny it. I mean, I mean you know, just fine detail. You know, God called you to teach. You just unravel S's and everything. You know? Glory to God forever. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord God forever. Verse 9, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctors the commandments of men. And that's the one thing, my brother and sister, that God wants you to stay away from. Stay away from it. Stay away from the doctrines of men. Believe that Jesus is a healer. Believe he's a surgeon. Now then, verse 10. Would you like to hear the, the shortest sermon that's ever been preached? As far as I can find, I'm in front of a congregation. Let me put out to you probably the shortest sermon that's ever been preached in front of a congregation. Notice what verse 10, what Jesus did. Now follow him, see real close. And Jesus called the multitude and said unto them, Call the multitude together. Come here. A multitude. Then he said, Hear and understand. And his sermon started. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth or destroys a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth or destroys a man, and they turned around and walked off. <laughs> and left the mother Jude sitting there looking at each other. Getting their minds wondering, I believe he means that we better take stock of our mouths and we better watch our mouths. Yeah, but that's exactly what he means that you better watch your mouth because your mouth builds the foundation of your life. See, whatever state you're in today, always remember your mouth puts you there and your mouth can get you out of there. Watch you. You're not ready for this, but I need to give it to you anyway. What state of health that you're enjoying right now in 1989, this Thanksgiving, you're enjoying health wise right now. What you said about Jesus the healer in 1988. You say, Norval, I believed in Jesus in 1988. No, no, I didn't say anything about that. That doesn't, that doesn't have nothing to do with it. What did your mouth say about Jesus, the healer, in 1988? I'm talking about Jesus, the healer, and I just forget about the whole Bible. What did he say? What did your mouth say about Jesus, the healer, in 1988? I don't know. I bought your tape series, Marvel, How to Live and Not Die. Well, I liked it too. Glory to God. Well, it turned me on, I'm telling you. And well, I quoted that, I quoted that stuff you have in your novel about Jesus the Healer for four or five weeks. Turn me on, man. I mean, I did it every day for four or five weeks. I did that. What 
What did you do yesterday? What did you do it all the time? Don't you know if your mouth ever loses its testimony about Jesus the healer, the door of your body falls open and invites the devil to come in and attack it. The door of your body, I said. Because you have no testimony about Jesus the healer. He said, you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Amen. How do you overcome diseases? By the word of your testimony about Jesus the healer. Amen. I said, you overcome diseases by the word of your testimony about Jesus the healer. And you can't have a wrong testimony. People, people that dies has a wrong testimony. Their mouth is not filled with faith words. Your mouth is filled with words that the Lord's going to do something. Well, I got news for your squirrely mind and dumb mouth. The Lord is not going to do anything. He's already done everything he's going to do. His name is available for you. His divine healing power is available for you, for the asking. And just because you ask and claim it right and do what you're supposed to do with God, It'll come into manifestation. Listen to me closely. And the third party of the triune God had received that. If you have the right words coming out of your mouth, the Holy Spirit will see that it comes into manifestation. I mean, his divine healing power for your body will come into manifestation. And it comes along in your life, you need a miracle? So what? You need a miracle, Marvel. Well, why do you need so many miracles now? In 1988, why didn't you allow your mouth in 1988 to confess all the time that Jesus is your miracle worker? And, he, and a miracle would be so easy for you to believe for a miracle. be so easy. But see, if you don't confess that Jesus is your miracle worker, your own personal miracle worker, when it comes time for you to need a miracle, you can't even believe in for a miracle when it comes to time. Because your faith is so weak and your mind is so seared over with your tradition that you've left the book of Hebrews and you've left the quality of faith and left the very thing that builds the foundation of faith on the inside of you. If you don't keep the book of Hebrews down here in your spirit, in your inward man, your mouth won't ever talk right. You won't ever talk faith talk. It'll talk wondering all the time. Your mouth will be wondering all the time. You'll speak those wondering words out. And always remember that. All your great wondering prayers passes right by heaven. It don't even get God's attention. You don't get his attention, much less receive anything. You don't even get God's attention. Bless it be God forever. What did your mouth in 1988 say about Jesus, the businessman? No, no, don't tell him me that stuff. Jesus is not a businessman. He's a God. Uh, God told Moses, Moses said, who are you? Who do I tell people you are? He says, you, you tell them I am. That I am. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> that means that God is everything. Oh, really? Yeah, you tell me about it. If you have a brother that dies, or a sister that dies, or a father that dies, or a mother that dies, there's no use in you wearing black for 14 days and going into morning, and morning, and Oh, brother. Jesus said, I will be that to you. If you have a friend that dies, Jesus says, I will stand in that gap and fill that empty spot up of you, and I will be your friend. If you have a, a daddy that dies, Jesus said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't you get upset and flip out because your own natural father dies. I know that you love him a, a lot, and you love him so much. But I've got enough pure love in me that I love you. I can fill that spot up. And Jesus said, I'll be your father. I'll be your brother. 
New thing you need, that's what I'll be. And that's the truth, too. That's the truth. Anything that you need, he is. You need to understand that about God. Anything that you need, he is. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Did your mouth say anything about your finances in 1988? About Jesus the business man or about your finances? You, 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 didn't, you didn't say anything about that in 1988? Well, that's, I always remember this. Everything that, you're, that you like right now in your life, everything that you like, that you like, I mean, everything that you don't have in your life. In 1988, all year of 1988, your mouth was silent where that was concerned. And always remember this. God can't hear our silence. You say, well, I love the Lord, Norval, and I, I, I believe the Lord. I have faith in God, Norval. Faith has a voice. Amen. Faith has a voice of victory. All the time, every day, day and night. A voice of victory. Not just a voice. A voice of victory, a voice of success. God hates failure. God loves the word success, and the quicker you start calling yourself successful in your business, the better God likes it. The quicker you start calling your body well, strong, and healthy, the better God likes it, and the better the devil will hate it. God just loves for the word of health to come out of your mouth. Every day, God can look at those stripes on Jesus' back and see where he paid the price for your healing and your health. And God just loves for you to, for the word of health to come out of your mouth and bowl up into heaven. He likes to hear it, glory to God forever. I am strong and I am healthy. You say, Norval, I've got cancer. And the doctor says, I'm going to have to die. The young lady told me yesterday here. She says, that's true. After just the morning service, I walked up, and she says, I was sitting down here, and she said, you see that man back there and those two children? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, that's my husband and my children. And I mean, she's a young woman. She says, Brother Norwell, the doctor says, I have cancer, and I've only got three months to live. And her face crumbled. And she says, I don't want to die, Brother Norwell. I want to raise my children. I said, well, honey, you don't have to die. Of course, I, I can see that she was, a, the spirit of fear got a hold of her a little bit, you know, and dying, and it can. I mean, a natural doctor is looking look in your face and say, you, you got three months to live, and you got a husband and two small children. I mean, you know, if, you don't, if, if, if you're not grounded in the book of Hebrews, it'll make your faith flip out. Man. But if you're grounded in the book of Hebrews, he says, you got cancer, you got three months to live. You say, no, not me. No. Not me. Uh -uh. I say, hey, doctor, cancer can't kill me. Of course, he'll go, huh? Because if your mouth says that cancer can't kill you, it can't. That is, if you'll follow up with that, that Jesus is your healer and confess that Jesus is your healer and believe that he's your healer and confess he's healing you now. The price has already been paid, and it's a gift. Blessed be God forever. Why did your mouth say concerning your healing, concerning your finances in 1988? Because whatever your mouth said in 1988, that's what you'll have to live with in 1989. That's what you're living with right now. Whatever state you're in in your life right now, Sitting right there in that seat. It's nobody's fault except your own. Your mouth put you there. 
reason your mouth puts you there is because your mind, your soul, the intellectual part of you is uneducated. You have not accepted the right kind of knowledge inside of you about God. Now, you may be a university professor, but I don't have anything to do with it. In your intellectual system, you have not accepted the right kind of information about the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been hearing sermons and hearing them only. But the Lord Jesus warns you about that when you go to church. Don't hear my word only. Don't be hearers of my word only. Be doers thereof. Glory yeah. to God forever. Well, Brother Northern, I love Jesus loved the Bible, but I don't never study the 15th chapter of the book of Matthew. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's, uh, I just want to be free to say anything I want to say, you know. I mean, you know, I am, I love the Lord, though. But I just want to, you know, I, I don't want to obey that normal. I want to be free. I don't want to be in bondage. Oh, yeah, you do, honey. Yeah. You want to be in bondage to God's word. I can tell you that now. If you'll be in bondage to God's word, it'll set you free. Lord, it be to God forever. See, in Christ Jesus, you only find freedom. If you'll keep a bondage, if you'll keep that thing knit between you and God and God's word and you obey it, you'll have freedom from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Or it be to God forevermore. That young lady yesterday told me she had cancer in three months to live. Is she in here? Is that her? Yeah, that's you. Is that your husband inside of you? Mm-hmm. All right. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? What's your name? What's your first name? Mary. Now, Mary, when you, before you leave, do you, do you have my tape series, How to Live and Not Die? Now, you've been obeying it, but for some reason you couldn't, you, you wasn't getting it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so you don't, you, you, oh, well, yeah, sure, I don't, I don't have anything to do with it. No, 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 no. It may be there for, for several more weeks. You know, you can't. Don't get involved, Mary, in the manifestation. Because if you do, you'll never get it. See, don't get over anxious for the manifestation. And just, and I'm, I'm a manifestation conscious. No. Just stay word conscious. Stay Jesus conscious. The manifestation will come whenever God's pleased. But if you operate in manifestation conscious and fear conscious, he will never be pleased, so it'll never come. You have to watch it real close. Trust God. And the more you trust God, I it to God forevermore. Now, he got ministered to yesterday, but Dave spoke, didn't he? Was that the one who got ministered to yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Now, grab a hold of that. See, whatever God did for you yesterday in Dave's service, grab a hold of that. And this glory to God, thank you, Jesus, I am healed. I'm going to walk the floor. Thank you, the Lord, that you are healed. The best thing you can do, Mary, is don't be afraid. I mean, just walk the floor. Darling, just walk the floor and say, Cancer, you are a total flake. You can't kill me. You don't even... What's wrong with you? You can't stand my body. I resist you. Now listen, listen to the words, Mary, I'm saying. <coughs> listen to the words that I'm saying, honey, and the way I'm saying them. And you do the same thing. You can, you, you can mock me, can't you? You can imitate me, can't you? But do it the same way. Don't, don't listen to that tape series and then do it the way you want to do it. Well, my brother Melville said, walk the floor and call Jesus my healer. I said, okay. Jesus, you are my healer. Jesus, you are my healer. Oh, I've only got three months to live. Oh, my God. Jesus, you are my healer. Jesus, you are my healer. Yeah, well, I'm trying to believe. Jesus, you are my healer. You know what I mean? I, I, I want to believe. 
Jesus, no, no, Mary, no, 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 no. How many of you will die if you do that? Don't do that. Don't do that. So God had me to make that tape series. Honey. Say it in the same tone of voice that I'm in. You understand? You know that tape series? And, and when, I, when I say, you walk the floor and say, Cancer, you can't kill me. Hey, Cancer, you can't kill me. I know you want to, but you can't. Because Jesus is my healer. You can't kill me. Glory to God, you can't kill me. And just keep on doing it with a loud voice. The louder you get, the better God likes it, and the more the devil hates it. Now next week, Mary, if it's worse, get up on top of your table and scream it out. But claim what the Holy Spirit did for you yesterday. You know, claim what God's Word says. Don't let your mouth go backwards now. I don't care what kind of manifestation you get in the service, you're going to have to get your mouth straightened out. Right. Well, you delivered yesterday from the spirit of fear. And when you talked to me yesterday, yesterday at noon, honey, I can tell the spirit of fear had your mind a lot. Are you free from that spirit of fear or are you still afraid? Sometimes you uh, seem like you're free and it comes right back on you. Oh, well, well, that's the way the devil operates. I always tell people, if you rise up with authority in Jesus' name and say, devil, I command you to leave me. I said, he will, at least for three or four minutes. <laughs> I guarantee you, he'll leave. if you resist him in Jesus' name with authority, I guarantee you he'll leave you for a little while. So just because you resist the devil in Jesus' name and he leaves you, that's no sign the devil's dead. One guy, you know, saw the devil cast out of a person. You know what he said? He goes back in and he says, oh my God, he says, the devil's gone. He says, the devil's dead. <laughs> He's gone. No, I don't know. No, the devil's not dead. He's just cast out of that person. The guy thought, well, because the devil left that person screaming, me, me, and cast out, you know, and it turned back normal. He thought the devil was dead because he left. Cast out of the earth. No, not cast out of the earth. He's cast out of that human being. And see, he, he got mad when you, when you, every time you resist the devil, Mary, it makes him mad. And he, he, when you resist him in Jesus' name, he goes out there outside of your house and stands out like this. <laughs> if you could see him, it'd be like this. He is so mad because you made him leave. But see, the devil only has one thing in mind for you, Mary, and that's the grave. And he's so mad because you make him leave. If you resist him in Jesus' name, he knows he has to leave. And he's going to come back and give you a try just in a few minutes. And he'll try to bombard your mind again. Try to put fear back up on you again. Fear causes you torment. You need to be delivered from the fear of the spirit of fear and claim the spirit of patience on the inside of you. Blessed be God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Shortest sermons ever been preached. 11th verse. Jesus said, Hear and understand, church. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of your mouth will defile you. It will destroy you. It will rob you. Of everything, the words comes out of your mouth. Verse 12, Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the, that the Jesus, Jesus, when you talk like that while I go in front of the multitude, when you told them about their mouth, you know, going in will hurt you and everything comes out will destroy you. Jesus, you know what you did? This is the ministry of the disciples. No, I didn't say this is the ministry of the disciples. You know what you did, Jesus? You offended the Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus, you offended them. Did you know that? You can go to your un un unbelieving family and you can tell them about a healing 
and you don't ever offend them. Offend, offend them. Tell them good, something good that Jesus did to still offend them. That's called being sick with religion. Sicko. Number 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Well, la ti ta 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 So what? 13th verse. But Jesus answered and said, Listen to me, men. Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. What does that mean? Well, my heavenly Father didn't plant that tradition they've got inside of them. And it'll be rooted up. If you fool around people like that that talks like that about the Bible, about God, you tell them about a healing, and it offends them, listen to what Jesus said. Are you ready for this? No, I'm not sure you are. He said, let them alone. Oh, really? Tell me about it. Let them alone, because they're blind. Leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Give me 14 examples, Lord, so I can believe it. Declare unto us this, this, this parable. And Jesus said, are you also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with, un but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Now then, are you ready? Are you ready for victory? Well, you're about to get it. Are you ready for victory? Well, she's just like everybody else, demon possessed child. Verse twenty-one. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, which I thought was a very humble way to approach Jesus. Cried unto him, saying unto him with her mouth. This is the words that come out of her mouth. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. That's a very selfish, uncouth statement. Have mercy on me, O Father. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. If you have a child that's possessed with devils, what do you want to pray for yourself for? Why don't you pray for them? Have mercy on my child, oh Jesus. It's very selfish to begin with. You know, see, some people come to the Lord crying, and it sounds real religious. Now, now David, see how, see how religious that sounds? See, come crying and say, oh, Jesus, have mercy on me. My family is all screwed up. And everything she did was wrong. <coughs> everything. Everything she did was wrong. Her approach was wrong. Her request was wrong. And uh, sometimes that happens to you. Well, but it happens to me, and I do it wrong. What does Jesus think about that? Uh-huh. Are you ready for this? No, you're not ready for it. I can tell you that now. Verse 23, it tells you exactly what he thinks about it. But he, Jesus, answered her, not a word. Sometimes the whole church goes, ah, Never! I didn't know Jesus was like that. You mean a woman that was crying and come to him and asking him for mercy upon herself? You, know, you mean to tell me that Jesus wouldn't even talk to her? I didn't know Jesus was like that. Well, he is. Whether you know it or not, he is. 
because her approach was wrong and her request was wrong. Get that straight. Her approach was wrong and her quest was wrong. Her approach was wrong and the words coming out of her mouth was wrong. Words coming out of her mouth was wrong. But her approach was wrong. Her whole approach. Sounds real and religious to me. Now that's about what it is. It's religious. You don't learn to put first things first. But you'll learn the easy way this morning. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus, forever. But the answer, not a word. Now here comes the disciples' ministry again. You have to watch them disciples. I can tell you that. His disciples came and stood and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. I mean, just boldly. Send her away, for she crieth after us. Now look up here, people. I've been following the Lord for 20-some years. And I, I, not one time have I ever found out that Jesus wanted to send somebody away. He wants you to get your thinking straightened out. He's not interested in you sending The Lord Jesus himself, now I'm not talking about Peter and John or Matthew and Mark, I'm talking about Jesus. They wanted to send her away. Send her away, she cried after her. Jesus said, now all the 20-some years I've been following the Lord, I've never known anybody to cry out for mercy to do it right, didn't get it. But you got to approach God right. God is a merciful God. We've got to approach him right. You can't approach him in your own way, in your own style. The Lord Jesus Christ is not interested in sending you away and letting you die with cancer or sending you away and letting your children go to hell or sending you away from him. He don't want you to send you away. He wants to take care of everything you need. But honey, your approach has got to be all right. I've seen people lose their life at a young age and their statements about Jesus love the Lord from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Even go to church and get blessed and die three weeks later. Because the wrong words was coming out your mouth. The wrong words was coming out your mouth. Jesus just told you. He just told you. You better watch that mouth because words that come out of your mouth will bless you or they will defile you and curse you and destroy you. And this example I'm giving you is a perfect example. Sounds real nice and religious. Nova, do you think this woman that approached Jesus like that, you think, was she a Christian? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? She loved the Lord as much as you do. Maybe more. Probably more. Because she ran him down. She ran him down to find him for help because her daughter was about to drive her nuts. Did you ever live in a house with a demon-possessed daughter? Then you'll drive you nuts, man. So she believed in Jesus enough to even go home, hunt for him and look for him and found him and came to him and audibly approached him. But she had the wrong approach and the wrong request. Can't have the wrong approach. If I, you know, would you still love me if I tell you the truth and get a little bit mean? I was raised in the Baptist movement, people. I love Baptist people. I love Baptist churches. But the Baptist has a wrong approach for healing for cancer. The wrong approach, I said. I didn't say they would know God. They know God. They have a wrong approach for healing for cancer. Wrong approach. Do they have a wrong approach for salvation? No, they don't. They have a right approach for salvation. They have a right approach for salvation. Wrong approach for cancer. Wrong approach to get... They have a wrong approach to get a healing get a new eardrum created and an old eardrum pushed out. You have to find some little girl that's four years old don't have any better sense. You grab her papa by the hand and drag him across the church. Say, come over here, papa. I'll pray for this with my little friend. She's only four herself. Come over here, papa. Let's, let's pray for my little friend. She needs a hearing. She's in her ear. She's deaf. I said, okay. So I went with her. And the Holy Ghost, glory to God. All oh, blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Make her leave us, make her leave us. But he's not interested in making her leave us. Notice verse 23. But he answered and said unto her, But his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. No, he don't want to send her away. He wants her to, he wants her to 
He wants you to be taught right. He wants you to do the right things. He wants you to learn to put first things first. He would like for the church to learn that too, but they haven't learned it yet, but he'd like for them to anyway. Verse 24. But he answered said unto them, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Notice the second approach in verse 25. You ought to mark in your Bible second approach. Yeah, you ought to mark that in the Bible. Up in verse 23, why don't you take your pen in verse 23, I mean, excuse me, verse 21, and, uh, and, uh, and mark first approach. Verse 21, mark first approach. Verse 25, Mark, second approach. Verse 25. Now then, look up here and let me teach you just for a minute, make a statement or two to you. I imagine the, I imagine the woman thought, well, the demon possessed daughter, I imagine she thought, well, he's not even talking to me. I can't even get his attention. He's not, he's not even going to talk to me. And you said that right here, wasn't going to talk to her. And when you approach him like that, like she did, he don't talk to you either. And it sounds really religious. It sounds like he would, but he don't. Everything sounds good, looks good, but it's not scriptural. You know what I said to you? That's the way a lot of church services are. That's the way a lot of denominations are. Sound good and look good, but unscriptural. Sound good and look good, but unscriptural. And many people, David, are so stupid when they go to church because their preacher says something, makes fun of prosperity or makes fun of faith or makes fun of healing or makes fun of this or speaks light of this or speaks light of this and don't know he's putting his own congregation under a curse. Yeah. Well, you can't do that. I would go to church like that myself. I'd leave you know, I'd leave. If I, if I were to make fun of anything about God, I'd leave. Well, I might say in respect for that service that it's over, but I just would ease out. I wouldn't cause him no, I wouldn't cause him no trouble. I'd ease out and shake. When I started getting my car, I'd shake the dust off of my feet. I'd say, well, I'm, he, 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 he won't be bothered with me anymore because he's not going to make fun of healing in my ears. Because them cancer devils and them all kind of sick devils are out there trying to attack me. And I'm not going to listen to this stuff. i got to go to a faith-building church to build me up. I want to know Jesus who he is. Exactly who he is. Not what he thinks about him. You have to watch it real close. If you listen to a guy like that makes fun of finances, don't put no emphasis on Jesus helping you in your business. You can stay broke the rest of your life. Because you're under that kind of a curse. Find your pastor that will preach success, people. Amen. Success in what? Success in anything. Not just finding, just first of all, successful spiritually. That means help feed the poor and help your pastor, help do things in the work. And if you don't know this, if your pastor ever asks you anything, he'll pick up an offering, greet people at the door. If you ever ask you to do any of those things, you ought to jump at it and take it. If I would find you, jump in it and take it. Boy, God will bless you. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. It's to own your town. You understand know what I said to you? I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. Open the door for people on Sunday morning and shake their hand and greet them to come into the house of the Lord as to own your city. Because everything you do for God, every door you open, every Sunday morning you're there in your book in heaven, God puts it down. Credits for you, credits for you, credits for you, credits for you. God said rewards for you, rewards for you. God said you couldn't even give somebody a cup of cold water without me giving you a reward for it. A cup of cold water don't even cost you anything. You can imagine what God, how God will bless you in heaven if you're a doorkeeper of his church down here. That costs them some of your time to do that. But you can't do something for God that he'll give you a reward for it. 
Second approach in verse 25. Then, not a smile, this approach. Then came she and worshipped him. Oh, really? Tell me about it. Glory to God. And worshipped him. He said, Brother Neville, why didn't she come and worship him at the first time? Uh, why don't you ask yourself that question about ten times? Why didn't she? Probably because you don't. If you don't. I'm not saying you don't, but if you don't. If I was you, Mary, before I ever started obeying anything on that tape series, How to Live and Not Die, or trying to get God to do anything for me, every morning when I got up and you, I'd spend some time worshiping the Lord. I wouldn't even mention, I wouldn't even mention my healing, honey. No, don't even mention your healing. Just worship the Lord. Just worship God. Just because you love Him. And tell him it's an honor to, for you to worship him and tell him you'll worship him all the days of your life. Well, this time, when she come down, and she began to worship the Lord, just bowed down before Jesus and began to worship him. What did Jesus think about that? He still wouldn't talk to the poor soul? Oh, no, oh, no. Wait a minute, now, wait a minute. When she bowed down and began to worship him, she got his attention. And so will you. Man. You know, if I, I wish I could, if I could live to be 200 years old, I'd like to go to every church in America and bring this message. Amen. Starting with the first Baptist. <laughs> every church in America needs to hear this Bible lesson. That's the truth, they do. I'm telling you, every church in America needs to hear the Bible lesson in the 15th chapter of the book of Matthew. It's absolutely wonderful. Glory will be to God forever. Absolutely wonderful. So get the attention of the Lord. Oh, you said that right. Oh, yeah, verse 26. But he thought, well, I'll give her a little test because, you know, I, don't, I want to make sure her worship is sincere. And always remember this, honey. He'll give your worship a test, too. Don't try to pull one of them quickie deals on God. God don't have a Wendy's giving out worship. You don't have any McDonald's stations giving out worship. If you're going to do it just for a quickie deal, uh, just a few days, uh, he was to put you through a little test. And it was, now she was there in person with him. But now that we live by faith and walk by faith and talk by faith and claim by faith, we live a faith life before God. So now that God will watch us in time, he'll watch our faith and pray that our faith faileth not. So he may watch you for days, he may watch you for weeks, he may watch you for months and see how sincere you are. Listen to me closely. But when the day comes, that you show God that you will worship Jesus every day for the rest of your life. He will give you anything you want. Amen. Amen. Not only give it to you, he'll see to it that you get it. How will he do it? Well, I don't know nothing about it. They'll just show up. they just show up, that's all. Glory to God forever. And you show up. Notice this little test he gave her, 26. But he answered and said, It is not meant to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Of course, in those days, Gentiles was known as dogs, and Jews were Jews, and Gentiles were known as dogs. And she was her being a Gentile. He cast my bread to dogs. They didn't shake her up any. She just said, Notice what she said. And she said, truth, Lord. Well, this will get you. This will, this will cut you under. She said, truth, Lord. But that's a truth, Lord. Truth, that's the truth. And I know us Gentiles are known as dogs. But she says, but the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Mm 
the only reason that I'm worshiping you, Jesus, because you are my master. Lord to God forevermore. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. And we see blasted Jesus with that. Look what he said, and she blasted him with that. In other words, do anything you want to me, Jesus. Call me anything you want to. I know we Gentiles are, are known as dogs, but the dogs who eat of the crumbs is far from their master's table. Notice verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, <laughs> O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thy wilt. And her, listen to me, church, and her demon-possessed daughter, vexed with devils, was made whole from that very hour. Now, church, look at that word, hour. H-O-U-R. That girl, vexed with devils, all the devils left her within one hour, within 60 minutes. And she was over in another village. She wasn't even there. Within one hour, all the devils left the girl. The mother got home. The mother got home and walked in. And there is a normal daughter. She's vexed with devils and demon possessed when she left. And when she got back, she walked in and a brand new daughter was there, normal, said, Hi, Mama, let's bake some chocolate chip cookies and have a party. <laughs> Blessed be the name of Jesus for him. Boy, it's wonderful to have a daughter at home that wants to bake chocolate chip cookies and be normal. I've already been through it, see. I know what it is to have that kind. I know what it is to have one devil possessed on drugs for three years and you see him every two or three weeks, maybe. Drive you up the wall. Drive you up the wall because you love that little child, see, more than you love yourself. Did you know that? Yeah, you love you, and you feel like a failure. So the only thing I'm going to do is pray. I just walked the floor and prayed for three years, and I told the devil the same way. I said, devil, listen to this, Mary. I said, devil, you will never send my daughter to hell. Never would you ever send my daughter to hell. Wasn't very long until one of her friends overdosed on drugs. I just kept on praying, kept on telling the devil. Stand in the gap far and telling the devil. Wasn't very long to another friend of hers. Overdosed on drugs and died. Getting up now about two and a half years, five of them had overdosed on drugs and died. In your hometown, uh, when you have five funerals of uh, your daughter's friends, It ought to make a believer of you after a while that the devil hates young people. And I kept walking the floor. You'll never kill my daughter. I bind you, Satan, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I kept standing the gap for her. And I was just like you. I just like you, Mary. I just like you, honey. I wasn't any different. I just like you. We're basically all alike. Like to drove me nuts. So, well, I'm going to get Brother Hagin. My daughter loves Brother Hagin. I'm going to get him to come to my house, and maybe he can get her free. So I got him to come. And that's what they prayed for. Her. Well, that's the summer. I'll get him to come. Well, he come and stay in my house. I got him to go in her bedroom and pray for her. And he did. And it's wonderful that they prayed for her, but she didn't change. Glory to God forevermore. 
Then a little over two years went by, and the Lord told me, he said, son, the very thing that you want more than anything in the world will never happen until you change. He told me, until I change. I said, me change? What's wrong with me? <laughs> oh, brother. Don't ever. Now, you may think you're pretty hot yourself, but don't ever ask God what's wrong with you. <laughs> he told me, he said, you're not loving her right. Every day, I want you to tell her that you love her, and I want you to tell her with your mouth, let those words come out of your mouth, let your words tell her you love her, and tell her I love her, and then you shut up. I don't want to hear them hearing them as more. I'm the head of this house, and bless God, you're going to do what I say if you live here. And, and, and uh, what are you going to come in at 4 o'clock in the morning? You'll ruin the reputation. You'll do this. Well, I see me. And the Lord told me, he said, oh, shut up. <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said, worship me. Worship me, son, and tell her every day that you love her. And when you get through telling her you love her, tell her that I love her, and then you shut up. And I did for six months. It wasn't easy, but I did anyway. I had to be delivered from my tradition. And when I did, then I was woke up one day, and the Lord God said to me, the first son, I, after I did that for six months, the first son I ever saw from her where love was concerned, or she even cared, she had been to church in three years. She sat in the living room one day waiting on, the, waiting on the gang to come and pick her up and go to the Playmate Club that night to do the hoochie-coochie. <laughs> well, in those days, it was the hot pants. I mean, they, had, well, they wore hot pants. And One day, <clears throat> five or six of her friends, she came out the house and Five or six of her friends would come with her and they were all wearing hot pants and they go back to her room and play rock and roll music. And I'm out in the den and one, one of her friends come out there in hot pants, you know, and says, Oh, Mr. Hayes, said, your daughter's on. She is so much fun. She, she, we, we go to the Playmate Club all the time. I said, yeah, no, 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 no. She says, Oh, Mr. Hayes, said, your daughter can really dance. Said, she can really dance. Says your daughter can really do the funky chicken. <laughs> We're going to play that club. It's so funny. She says the girls are going to be in the cages dancing. You know, she says they they just stop whatever they're doing and say, "Here comes Zona," and they start playing the funky chicken. And your daughter starts doing the funky chicken, and they just laugh because she does it so funny. Said your daughter can really do the funky chicken. Well, I mean, you know, me being over 18, I never heard of the funky chicken. I says, what is a funky chicken? Well, she said, that's the dance, Mr. Hayes. It's just a new dance that's out now, you know, of the funky chicken. She said, in your day, it was the Charleston. I said, it wasn't the Charleston. The Charleston was back in the 20s. I wasn't a teenager in the 20s. Are you nuts? I said, in my day, it was the jitterbug. Bell bottom trousers and the jitterbug. Are you kidding me? I said, oh. well, I mean, you know. I said, well, that's okay. I said, don't worry about it. I said, I've already attacked my daughter. She says, you have? I said, yeah. I said, she don't have no choice no more. I worried for a while, stuff like that, you know, and like to drive me nuts, but I said, I don't even worry about it no more. I don't, don't drive me nuts no more. Because I said, Jesus told me what to do, and I said, I've already attacked her with my love and with my faith. I've already attacked her with my love and with my faith. And I said, one of these days, I don't know when it's going to come. I said, it's up to him. I, I, you know, I care less. I said, so I don't even worry about it no more. I said, but one of these days, I guarantee you, honey, Jesus is going to funky her chicken. <laughs> Cute little girl in hot pants looks at me and she says, He is? 
I said, oh, yeah. And I said, honey, listen to me. I said, little darling, when, you're, when Jesus funkies your chicken, your chicken has really been funking. Who <laughs> 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 real? I'm just you funny. <laughs> you know, and I was First time I saw from some of this, she had, had any sense at all. She called in her room one day. She says, one Friday afternoon late, you know, she's waiting on the game to pick her up, you know, with the Playmate Club or whatever. Anyway, she said, Daddy, hey, Daddy, come in here. So I walked in the living room. And she said, Daddy. That's the first time I'd heard that voice in three years. She said, Daddy, I know you love me. I feel security in this house. Daddy, I'm getting to the point I don't want to leave. I don't even want to leave today. I want to stay here with you. That's the first time I heard anything like that in three years. She said, I know that the gang don't love me. They don't love nothing. They just love themselves. She said, I know that you love me. Now listen to this. Six months every day. But the Lord told me it would happen if I'd obey him. Six months. Everybody say six months. Six months. Every day. Every day. Sometimes several times a day. I would say to her, I'd say, Zona, I love you, honey, and Jesus loves you, darling. After six months, she finally said, Daddy, I know that you love me. I know Jesus loves me. And I feel so secure in this house. She said, Daddy, you know, the pure, clean love is so strong in this house. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't really want to go anywhere. I'm getting tired of phony stuff. I'm getting tired of false stuff. Daddy, I don't want to go. I said, well, honey, you don't have to leave. Just stay here. About that time, the gang pulled up. She says, I guess I better go. So she went. I began to walk the floor and pray. And the Lord God said to me, he said, you never have, son. Laid your hands on her bed and prayed. I went straight to her room and laid my hands on her bed like this and prayed. That night, when she came in about 4 o'clock in the morning, I sat up to 2.30 and she didn't have come in. Went to bed about 4 o'clock in the morning. Her eyes popped up about 5 o'clock in the morning. There was a man sitting beside of her bed, dressed in bright clothing. About as big as two men, just sitting on the floor, with his legs like this, sitting on top of his legs, sitting on the floor, looking at her. Well, she thought she was dreaming. Then she turned her head back against the wall, but she just lay there and she says, well, I'm not dreaming. I think I am. I must be, though. But no, this is a bedspread on my bed. This is a wall in my room. My name is Zona Hayes. My daddy is named Norval Hayes. This is me. This is me. And she says, I'm not dreaming, am I? She looked back around slowly. And he was still sitting there better. And he was so big, she got so scared, she started gapping for breath. He was about as big as two men. And so she, gapping for breath, he just got up 
And he saw that she's gaping for breath and got scared, you know. Most all the time when angels appear to you, you get scared, the Bible says. And he walked down by the room, didn't even open the door, just walked through it. Walked down the hallway, she jumped up by the bed and watched him. He got down towards the kitchen, just walked through the wall, right through the air over the top of the house and just walked off. Walls didn't mean nothing. He just walked through them. It so sort of scared her. I mean, it shook her brain, man. She finally made it to my door. She was trying to knock, knock on my door. And she was so scared, she couldn't even knock on my door. She, her whole body was like this. <laughs> Woke me up. And I told her, I said, she's trying to tell me about it, you know. I said, no. I just full of peace and love. I said, nose on it. I said, nose on it. I said, that was your angel, honey. She says, Daddy, I don't, don't say that. I don't want him. He's too big. I said, I don't care if you want him or not. And do you know, he scared her. See, God has his own ways. He scared her so strong that she would never take another dose of drugs. It's called getting the devil scared out of you. Well, I don't care how God does it as long as he does it. Amen. Glory be to Jesus forever. But what I want you to do, you know, if you have a devil-possessed child or if you have anything wrong, what you need from God, and now, how did, how, how, the, how did she get hers? Well, she got God's attention because she came and worshipped him, that's all. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I'd like for you to do. If you've got troubles this morning, uh, just hold up your hands right now and let's worship God. Hold up your hands. Hold up your hands and let's worship the Lord. Hold up your hands this morning, let's worship God. Hold up your hands this morning, let's worship the Lord. So important that you worship God. Hold up your hands and worship God. I can't get all the answers for you. I just want to get you on the right road. That's all I want to do is get you on the right road. Just hold up your hands and worship Him. All right, now that you've worshipped Him for a minute or two, start telling Him what you want. Ask him for what you want. You have not because you ask not. You have a devil-possessed child. Claim that child's freedom. Ask him for what you want right now. You want to help you in business? Ask him. You have not because you ask not. Don't just ask before you worship him. Your approach could be wrong. Glory to God forever. Now, then you got one more step. After you ask him, you, have to, you, you can't forget this, people. You can't forget these things. Now, start thanking him because you believe that you received. Start thanking him because you believe that you received. I believe that I received. Glory be to Jesus forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 